YouTube, it's your boy Amb, and we back at it again with another video. Um, first and foremost, your boy reached a thousand subscribers, and I really want to appreciate everybody that has supported me so far. Thank you for the encouragement, all the positive energy, you know, the good vibes. Like it really means a lot to me, and it makes me want to keep doing this, knowing that you know I like the content. So really appreciate it. Uh, if you you know know a med school friend or know a pre med friend that can benefit from these videos, like share my page, like subscribe and uh, you know get things popping like I'm, I'm I didn't see myself you know like growing like this but I'm glad that y'all like the content without further ado um, I want to share with y'all how I study for step I know I promised y'all in my my in my first aid and step one experience video that I'll make a detailed video on what exactly I did and how I did it so this is it uh, this may be a longer video but I really just want to be thorough just to kind of let y'all know like what I did leading up to my dedicated time and then what I did during dedicated uh, to do well on step one. So I'm basically divide the video in like two parts, like what I did in preclinicals, what I did um, in dedicated, and then basically what resources I used and how I utilized them. So as far as resources, I'm gonna start there. I think the most important resources are UFAPs, UWorld, First Aid, Pathoma, Sketchy. Uh, I use Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm, and then other resources that are pretty, I also use are pretty helpful. Um, Boys and Beyonds, I didn't really, I'll talk about that a little later. Boys and Beyonds, I use a little bit. And then Dr. Goyon, um, his audio lectures was also pretty good. So it's crazy, man. Like I came into college and people were talking about step one. I'm just like, what are y'all niggas talking about? Like what, what is like, I didn't understand the significance of step and like what step was all about. So I, I, it kind of made more sense on like my second year. And um, at that point, I was like, okay, like this exam is important. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, how, how am I make sure I put my, set myself up well? And um, there was a fourth year in my school that kind of had like a step panel for us. And he basically told us like, you need to start thinking about step, you know, well before you get to dedicated. And that's why I really want to share with y'all. Like, the thing about step one is like, the, the score you get, kind of correlates with the energy you put in. Does that make sense? I don't think the MCAT is set up that way where you can study for a year for the MCAT. If you don't get it, you don't get it. You know what I mean? You just be suffering. But with, with step one, like if the, the energy put in kind of dictates the result that you get out. I'm basically talking about how I use the resources uh, before dedicated and then when I got to dedicated. So I'm gonna start off with first aid. I basically made a whole video on first aid like I can't stress it enough, like it's, it's necessary. I can't stress it enough, it's necessary. Like you just gotta know the book. It's, 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 there's no shortcuts about it. So check out my video on first aid if you haven't. I have had a lot of people ask me like how I chopped the spine. I just went to FedEx. You can go to FedEx or Office Max or um, any like paper store and they'll just cut it for you. Like take off the spine so you can hole punch it and all that good jazz. So I have a whole video on first aid. I'm not really gonna belabor that point. Also, I, want, I didn't want to mention like Whatever resources that you choose to use or you, you like, whatever resources like helps you, try to incorporate that resource like throughout. Like be comfortable with that resource prior to dedicated. Don't start a new resource like in dedicated because at that point, like you don't you only have a, a finite amount of time. You know what I mean? Like most schools is six to eight weeks. I mean, my school gives us three months, but at that point you don't want to be wasting time like watching a resource for the first time. So whatever resource you like, like you don't have to use the ones I use. If you like DIT, if you like Kaplan, if you like whatever, just use those resources well before you get to dedicate. By the time you get to dedicate, you really should just be doing questions. For me, this was this was kind of my game plan. So I used first aid, I kind of had that down, I was good. Another thing that I used um, in the UFAPs was Pathoma. And I basically, every like section of Pathoma that correlated with my class, um, the, 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 the module that I was in, you know what I'm saying? I would watch the video. So by the time I got to dedicate, I already had put them watch. And it really, I was really just using it to like get a, get a greater understanding of like the pathology and all that good jazz. So the next resource was Sketchy Micro, uh, Sketchy Farm. So I didn't use Sketchy Path quite frankly because it was just, it was came out later and I already had Pathoma for pathology and I had Dr. Goyon's pathology lecture. So I felt good in pathology. But Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a must. Like, 
should I, you have to. I mean, you don't have to, but like, if you're like me, I can't, I'm not a good memorizer as far as like just memorizing just brute facts, right? So I need like that picture to help me be able to recall like stupid little details and Sketchy does an amazing job with pharmacology and with um, microbiology. I basically use Sketchy Micro just to study for my uh, microbiology class, like when I took it first year. So I, I watched all the sketchy micro videos in first year, you know, for class. But I had to like, then my second year, I had to go and watch all the sketchy farm videos um, that I hadn't watched. Once I started to like think about like, okay, step is coming soon. At that point, I just started every like pharmacology lecture, I just watched sketchy for it. So I really stopped going to like our pharmacology lectures because I was just like, if it's in sketchy, I need to know it's going to help me in class. It's going to help me on my tests and it's going to help me on step. So. Um, I basically just watched as like as as we were presented. Let's say I'm in GI and we're learning about um, all the diabetes drugs. I watch the diabetes sketch on on the drugs for that sketch. You see what I'm saying? So by the time I got into Dedicate, I had most sketchy farm videos watched, but I didn't have all of them watched. So I did have to watch a good amount of videos in Dedicated. But if I was to do it again, like I, every time I, I I learned about a drug, I would watch that sketchy video then. Does that make sense? Because it only helps you in class, right? So you might as well, as well use a, a nice resource that's gonna help you do well in your day to day and help you in step. By the time you get to dedicated, you've already watched it, you see what I'm saying? Also, another thing with the micro that I, I ended up doing, I think it was very beneficial. Every time I seen a virus or a bacteria um, in class, I would rewatch that sketch at that point. Like think about it like this, right? Like what makes a bug high yield? The fact that it can present itself in multiple organ systems and cause disease, cause issues, right? So literally like those bugs that present in GI and you know, renal and neuro, those are bugs that they're gonna test you on. You know what I mean? Like bugs that have one thing, that's lower yield versus like Staph aureus, right? Like Staph aureus presents itself in every damn near, you know, organ system, right? I literally watched Staph aureus like eight times, you see what I'm saying? But that's a high yield bug, that's a bug that you just gotta know stone cold. So let's say you, let's say you, you you know, let's, let's, let's look at like, for example, like strep pyogenes, you know what I'm saying? How it presents itself in renal, how it presents itself in cardiac, how it presents itself in MSK. You should be re-watching that video every time you like have a, I don't know, uh, every time you have like an infectious disease lecture, like, oh, these are the bugs, the most common causes of pneumonia. Right? All those bugs, like watch that video again. At that point, you're continuously keeping that content, you know, refresh, you're keeping it there. Does that make sense? Um, so that's how I kind of use Sketchy during pre-dedicated. And then really, I think the most important thing uh, during pre-dedicated is just like really learn the material when you learn it. You know what I mean? Like that seems counterintuitive. I mean, like, it seems like normal, but a lot of people don't really like take the time to really learn the material, right? So by the time you get to the step, you're trying to learn new things and it really shouldn't be the case. Like, so UWorld. So my personal opinion on UWorld, and you, if you talk to 10 different people, you get 10 different responses, but my personal opinion is I think you should save UWorld until you get to like your dedicated step studying or right around the time, like maybe like within three months of when you're about to take the test. Here's the thing, like a lot of people use UWorld like throughout their classes and I think and that's, that's kind of how I did it. Like, I would use, I would do questions on UWorld to, like, prepare myself for my tests or things of that nature. But what happens is when you get to dedicated, like, you don't get the same frequency and volume of certain questions that you just can't miss. Does that make sense? So, I'll give you an example. Like, in, in our uh, endocrine and female reproductive class, um, when we were, like, focused on more on the female reproductive por portion of it, I was doing a whole bunch of endocrine questions just to make sure I stayed up on it, right? And by the time I got to step, like, I didn't see a lot of those questions anymore. You see what I'm saying? Because I already did them, um, like, eight months ago. You see what I'm saying? So imagine if I had the full 2,400 questions within three months, right? At that point, like, once you see uh, MEN, multiple endocrine, endocrine neoplasia, like, concept eight times, like, you, you got it. Versus only seeing it three times because you already ran through a lot of your questions prior, you know what I'm saying, to get into dedicated. Also, like, I could have reset my questions when I started step one, I mean, started started dedicated, but I, I just didn't want it to be like, I was getting the answers right because I've already seen it. I want to be like mentally challenged. So um, I think I think personally, like, you should save you world till you get to dedicated. However, I think it is extremely beneficial to do questions. 
And this may sound crazy, I know it's kind of cost, like costly, but I'll probably get like USMLE RX, you know what I mean? So get RX during your preclinical years, first and second um, year, and do questions on RX. And by the time you get to like, all right, it's full step mode, you then, you know, start your world and then you really see where you're at, you know, because your world is, is, the, is the goal, you feel me? Um, RX is also solid, but you, U World is the kingpin, and that's the U in U fat. So I talked about saving U World to dedicate, but I think it's extremely important to do questions prior. You know what I'm saying? During your preclinical years, just to like, because questions are what step one is. You know what I mean? It's, it's a question-based test, so you want to start doing as many questions as you can. And what I would recommend is basically like getting RX, USMLE RX, and doing questions on things you've already seen. Um, on, on like content that you've, classes you've already taken, you see what I'm saying? So uh, I mentioned that we, we had a step panel, or not step panel, a, a fourth year like kind of talked to us about step. He ended up doing well. One thing he told us to do is start doing like five to 10 questions every day. You know what I mean? And I didn't do that. Um, Cause I was just like, nah, that's a lot. My, my partner did and he ended up like, his, his starting, his like step one dedicated experience was started up much higher because he's been doing questions for like the last six, seven months. You see what I'm saying? So if I was to do step again, I would have been diligent on doing questions every day. Five to 10 questions, it may take you 30 minutes, it may take you 45 minutes, you know what I'm saying? By the time you do questions for a month, you can do 10 and 30, what used to take you like an hour or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, if you know the score that you want to get, you're going to have to put in the work, right? A 23 year old black female, at that point, you're thinking sarcoidosis, you're thinking lupus, you're thinking, um, sickle cell, you know, certain things like presentations, the way after a while that pattern recognition becomes a lot stronger and you don't have to like, it doesn't take you to week five of study for step for you to get that because you've been doing questions for the last year, right? And that's one thing, if, if you don't take, if, if anything, let's say you're a second year, first year student, when, you, when you're done with a, a module, keep that stuff kind of relevant. Like don't let the information that you learn bottom out as you learn new things. I think the people that do well on step, they basically keep that information as they add new information. You know, obviously you're not gonna remember everything to the exact detail, but let's say you do five to 10 questions a day, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember learning about nephrotic versus nephritic syndromes in Reno, even though you're now a GI, does that make sense? So by the time you get to step, the it's not drinking water out of the fire hose, all the information, because you basically kept that information as you move forward. Does that make sense? And I think that's like, the people that I know that, been, that did questions like throughout all eight. Like I say all the time, man, if you do more questions, if you do 10,000 questions versus somebody that did 1,000 questions, the person that did 10,000 questions is gonna do better because step is 280 questions and it's like, how much have you seen before, right? So you do 10,000 questions, you've seen a lot than, more than the dude that did 1,000 questions, you feel me? So I think that's ex extremely important. I think like that's a, a, a practical thing that you can do at this point, you know, ten qu five questions a day, um, learn or re-emphasize or make sure that you've cemented the, inf the information you've already learned. And then from there, by the time you start dedicated, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're good. And I think, I think that's probably the, the one thing I would have changed in my approach before I got to step one. As far as like my preclinical, I'm glad I used First Aid how I did. I'm glad I used uh, Pathoma, watched Sketchy as many times as I did, even though I wish I would have watched all the farm lectures prior to dedicated. But the questions are the one thing that I wish I had done more and been more consistent with, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like, step isn't about tell me how much you know about X, Y, Z. It's can you answer questions, yes or no, you feel me? So let's switch gears and let's talk about my Dedicated, how I study in dedicated. So like I said, I took seven weeks and seven weeks, three days. And if I was to do it again, I'd probably have chosen eight weeks and then like taking a day off because um, I was really in a bad mental health, mental like state of mind. And I think like taking a day where it's like, okay, to be a human, to do the things you like to do, I think is helpful in the long run. So I probably taken eight weeks and taking like a day off once a week. Um, I took seven days. I really only took like three days off in the whole, in the whole time because I was really just too stressed. Like I couldn't, I couldn't have enjoyed myself knowing I wasn't where I wanted to be. 